why do you care? Well, you might be asking that because you're like, well, hey, I just want to lose a few pounds and I want to look better naked. Or, you know, I'm 40, 50 years old and I just want to be strong enough to play with my grandkids, right? Or you might be thinking to yourself, you know what? I want to have bigger biceps and a bigger chest and bigger thighs or a bigger booty. Why wouldn't I go and just spend my time with machines? Well, let me put it to you this way. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Black Iron Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Reyes, and today we're going to be talking about what is Black Iron Fitness. We're going to break it down. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of Black Iron Fitness. So what is Black Iron Fitness? Well, I think at this point you should know that this is a show that's really all about barbells. So at the heart and soul of everything that I do with relation to coaching, fitness is, of course, the epicenter of that. Um, not to be confused with performance for sport, which I do coach. Um, right now, I've got somebody who's a triathlete who I'm coaching. I've got multiple people that are participating in uh, powerlifting uh, most recently. But at the end of the day, what I am is I'm a fitness coach who's mainly interested in the general health and well-being of our community of the, of the general population. So my tool of choice, my weapon of choice, if you will, is the barbell. And there's a good reason for that. And we're going to go into those reasons. But first, let me just say that the black iron fitness training style, which I'm going to describe is not the only way to do anything. You can certainly use machines. You can use bands. You can use Pilates reformers. It really doesn't matter as long as you're doing something for your fitness and it's ticking the boxes and it's moving you forward cool if that's for you great if you're interested in barbells that's what we're about right so the barbell is at the epicenter of black iron training and so long long time ago the barbell was popularized as a matter of fact in a different episode i'm actually going to break down i'm going to do some research for you or do some searching and find some history there's a few people that have written some really cool articles about the history of the barbell but the barbell most recently has had a resurgence of popularity thanks in large part to CrossFit. Um, I am an advocate of CrossFit uh, for certain purposes and certain people and certain pursuits. I think there's a lot of good things. I don't personally uh, coach CrossFit, although I am a CF level one and level two, and I've participated in CrossFit for a long time and kind of drank the Kool-Aid pretty hard there for a while. But one of the good things that came out of CrossFit was the repopularization of the barbell. And the barbell kind of fell out of favor. I think it was back around, I want to say the 60s or the 70s. Um, there was a gentleman who came up essentially with the circuit system that we all know now, like the, the traditional circuit. You walk into your traditional um, you know, Globo gym or even your neighborhood big box style gym and you'll see leg extension machines leg curl machines seated chest press uh, seated overhead press um, the uh, leg press uh, back extension biceps curl triceps extension as a matter of fact when i was working at new york sports clubs that was called the circuit and that was like the first place that everybody was ushered into so this gentleman by the name of arthur jones uh, came up with the nautilus system back in the 60s or 70s and that really kind of took the fitness into the realm of machine-based training, which has its place still. It really does, but it's not the only way to train. And I'm a fan of what came before that and actually way before that, which is black iron style of training. Now, if you talk up to anybody who's from, let's say the starting strength community or is in powerlifting, for example, um, and you mention black iron gyms, they'll probably know what you're talking about. So when you walk into a black iron gym, there's not a bunch of shiny stuff all over. There's not a bunch of fancy equipment. Um, as a matter of fact, what you'll probably find is very high quality uh, squat racks. You'll find barbells that are high quality barbells. You know, high quality doesn't necessarily mean really expensive. It can range anywhere from $200 up to over $1,000. Um, but there'll be high quality barbells, which means there's good quality knurling. The tensile strength on the barbells is very specific. The diameter of the barbells is very specific. These barbells are very, very resilient. They will not bend very easily. 
usually people respect them and take care of them. You won't see people like, you know, doing all sorts of crazy things like dropping them on the floor, unless you're in a weightlifting gym, of course, um, or perhaps a CrossFit gym. And, you know, you'll see a lot of plates, a lot of steel, just about as far as you as the eye can see. I, we, we call it iron, right? There's iron, steel, whatever you want to call it. But there's there's plates every place, uh, plates organized. And oftentimes in these black iron gyms, believe it or not, it's not like the typical Globo gym where you go and there's barbells and dumbbells and plates are all, you know, strewn about and, and just haphazardly thrown all over the place. Oftentimes when you go to these places, these people really respect the barbell and they really respect the gym. And they're also of a type of personality where they have no problems talking to people in their community and calling them out for leaving their shit around. So you, you'll usually see barbells that are respected. You'll usually see plates that are respected, etc. But anyway, I digress. Uh, one other thing that you'll see in these gyms is you'll see people using chalk. Um, you'll see oftentimes a lot of strong people. And these are our black iron gyms. So before... Um, uh, before Arthur Jones came out with this Nautilus system, a large amount of fitness training was done with the barbell. Now, in black iron style training, it's not just the barbell. I want to put that as a caveat. So that I guess you could call it more like free weights, right? Because, you know, you'll also find dumbbells, right? Various dumbbells of all different sizes, all the different iterations, usually very high quality, um, usually not chrome plated. Uh, the, the, you know, maybe sometimes, but mo mostly not, uh, kettlebells, kettlebells would also probably, you know, be considered to be part of that family of the black iron style. And so these gyms do exist. Um, I think a, a lot of the repopularization of the black iron gyms has come from credit to starting strength, which as a cat, you know, as kind of a disclaimer, I did follow starting strength for a really long time and have a lot of respect for what they do. Mark Ripito, if you haven't read the book and you don't know about him, go check it out. It's a great place for new people to start. He has a very nice systemized, systemized manner of putting things together with regard to fitness. Um, he's not the end all be all, of course. And I don't know that there is anybody out there that is, but he definitely has his, his corner of the market for getting people into black iron style training. Uh, but with that being said, you know, it, the the black iron style gyms have really researched in popularization in large part to him, too. But the barbell really kind of came back when CrossFit came about, because suddenly CrossFit gyms, every place, high quality barbells, uh, usually some form of a strength bias programming or strength representation in the programming, if you call it programming. We'll get into that in a different episode uh, where we actually talk about the difference between programming and just exercising, um, training and exercising. But CrossFit really brought the barbell back and not just to the typical crowd, right? It's not just the the, the, the high school football athlete. It, it's not just the power lifter, right? It's, it's even not even the bodybuilders because for a while there, the bodybuilders kind of got away from as much barbell work. I think it was a lot more machine based work, but CrossFit really brought that, that barbell back to popularization for populations that really weren't getting exposure to it or weren't really considering it in the past. And these are females. Um, these are, uh, older folks, you know, CrossFit really got it, did a great job of spanning a huge, uh, you know, uh, 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 span of, of ages. And I don't want you to confuse this in thinking that um, this is some big CrossFit ad or giving them all the credit or give starting strength all the credit, just to give you an idea of the history of where Black Iron Fitness kind of researched and it came back in popularization. So Black Iron style training is basically free weight training for the most part centered around the barbell. Now, why do you care? Well, you might be asking that because you're like, well, hey, I just want to lose a few pounds and I want to look better naked. Or, you know, I'm 40, 50 years old and I just want to be strong enough to play with my grandkids, right? Or you might be thinking to yourself, you know what? I want to have bigger biceps and a bigger chest and bigger thighs or a bigger booty. Why wouldn't I go and just spend my time with machines? Well, let me put it to you this way. Black iron style training is a few things. One thing is it is accessible more so than it ever has been because all you need is for the most part, a barbell, some plates, a squat rack, a bench perhaps. Um, and you know, some optional equipment would be, you know, uh, the, the, 
belt and shoes and things like that. But that's pretty much all you need to, to get a really good complete workout, regardless of what your goals are outside of if you're a highly competitive bodybuilder, maybe that's not your choice. If you're a, an, an endurance athlete, you could use this, um, for your, your off season strength program or your in season strength program. If you're somebody who wants to lose a few pounds and maintain their muscle mass during that weight loss process, black iron training can offer that to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're somebody who wants to be stronger, but not necessarily get bigger. I have a lot of my female athletes, a lot of my older folks that that's their goal. They don't necessarily want to look like a bodybuilder, but they want to be stronger. And this is a great simple method to use the basic compound lifts to do that. And what I mean by compound lifts is I'm talking about multi-joint exercises. Um, and I like to categorize them in, I'm not exactly sure how many directions we're talking here, but I'll, I'll give you my basic rundown is that for a general fitness program, a bodybuilding program for somebody who's a beginner or novice, um, a body composition or, you know, uh, aesthetic program for somebody who's in that same category, we should start off by focusing on the main movements, these compound movements. So we're going to talk about the bench press, right? So we're using the shoulders, the elbows and the wrists, right? Those are multiple joints using in a horizontal pressing pattern right now. If you're listening to me versus watching me, I'm pushing my hands out in front of me, right? Like a bench press. Um, you have the row, which would be a barbell row, which you could do off the ground. You could do it suspended, uh, pendulum rows and things of that nature. That would also be able to be done with a barbell and you know, you got your horizontal pulling pattern. You have your overhead pressing pattern with the press or the standing press or the military press, whatever you want to call it, where you're taking that barbell and it's resting underneath your chin and you're in a standing position and you press that all the way overhead until you're fully locked out overhead, still using the shoulders and elbows and you know, your wrists, etc. Um, and then you've got your lower body exercises. We've got the, what is called the king of all lifts, the, the squat, right? Multi-joint compound movement, hips, back, knees, ankles, etc. cetera. Uh, and the deadlift, um, an unfortunate name, but nonetheless, a great exercise for the lower body and total body strength for back health, for back strength. Those are basic movements right there that pretty much check all the boxes. So even if you were somebody who was just trying to get the recommended amount of daily exercise and physical activity into your lifestyle. And if you don't know what that is, you can check on the CDC's website. You can check WHO, uh, ACSM, um, HHS to figure out what those recommendations are. But as of 2018, these recommendations were put out and I'm going to have a full podcast delving deep into these physical activity guidelines for general fitness. So as we go through these podcasts, I'm going to actually break down a couple different categories. So we're going to have one that's kind of devoted towards what is black iron fitness as it relates to bodybuilding. Uh, how does black iron fitness training, uh, you know, help somebody whose focus is weight loss? Why is black iron fitness training appropriate for somebody who's just trying to be generally fit and follow the recommended guidelines? But I digress. The recommended guidelines basically state that in addition to getting 150 to 300 minutes worth of moderate activity or 75 to 150 minutes worth of vigorous activity, you're also supposed to do at least two days, two different bouts of full body muscle strengthening exercises using most of your major muscle groups. So if I were to break that down and interpret that, I mean, what I just described in terms of the movement patterns and the basic compound lifts, right? The bench press, the row, the overhead press, maybe a chin up, um, the deadlift and a squat. That's going to cover that. As a matter of fact, I just completed today a free program that I'm going to be releasing that is specifically for maintaining your general fitness guideline minimums through a barbell based training, strength and conditioning program. So that's going to be available on my website. Um, I'll have it posted a few different places. So when I drop that, go and look for it. It is free to download. It is yours. My goal with this is that it's uh, a great starting point for anybody that doesn't know anything about, you know, about uh, the, the, the world of black iron training or barbell training and wants to attack their health and fitness in a systemized relatively simple, logical manner. Now, here's the thing about black iron training that I think is actually pretty cool. 
it's a hard style of training. What I mean by that is just the same thing goes for any training, but particularly with barbells, it's one of those things where you're going to have to work hard if you want the results that you claim that you want from your fitness. There's just no way around it. And it doesn't matter if you use a leg extension, leg at curl, or, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the Nautilus circuit, or if you want to go to your local Globo gym and pick up the shiny dumbbells, or you want to take some sort of body conditioning class for anything to be effective, it's going to have to be hard, right? So if we're working on strength, it's going to have to be challenging. If we're working on increasing muscle size or maintaining muscle during a dieting phase, you're going to have to work hard. And so the one thing that I love about the black iron style training is it already has a little bit of an attitude. It has a great attitude and there is a, I guess there's a little bit of a stigma, but there's also kind of a cool factor to it where people that decide to take this on, they're kind of cut from a different cloth. What it I've kind of described it is the people that are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s that have focused on black iron style training that is not because of CrossFit or maybe it's a lot of these people that have lost, left CrossFit, but they want to keep the barbell in their lives. They will gravitate towards black iron barbell style training. And there's a grit to that person. That person is the type of person who really... Uh, enjoys good black coffee, good quality coffee, and they will spend good money on a good grinder and a good drip percolator or whatever their style is, pour over, and they will make sure that their beans are kept vacuum sealed and they, they care about that. Also, on the flip side of that, the same type of individuals that are fine with instant coffee, you know, they just, but, but they like it black, right? Because there's something about that. There's something, something about that attitude. This is the same person that wants that 40 day dry aged steak. And they're going to drive past three to four cheap steak houses, outback steak houses to go to that one steakhouse that has that perfect dry aged steak. And they'll treat themselves every once in a while, right? This is the person that's not drinking Jack Daniels, you know, they're skipping over the Jack Daniels and they're going to something like a single barrel, let's say, I don't know, bullet or, or, or Sazerac or something like that. Right. There, there, there's a certain type of individual they're gritty by nature. And if they're not gritty, they're trying to find their grittiness or they don't even realize it. They just want to continue to barbell train, but they oftentimes will become that gritty individual. And I've seen this barbell be so transformative for so many people, people that lacked confidence. And through my experiences of working with them, I've been able to watch them grow confidence through trials and tribulations because the iron doesn't lie. It's not going to cheat you. And it's certainly not going to let you get away with shit because if you don't put in the effort, you're not going to get the results, right? And it's hard. It's cold. It's steel. It's not pretty. It's a little gritty. But at the end of the day, when you put in that effort, it is so damn rewarding. And you get to walk around with this air of confidence because you're just slightly cut differently than everybody else, right? And people won't get you. And eventually you'll find your own community of people through fitness because you all share this common bond, this love of the barbell, this love of the black iron lifestyle. And that's why I've really, really taken this on it's my company name, Black Iron Fitness Company, right? It's, I'm not the owner or creator of Black Iron Style Training. I just wanted to look at what is the root at the root of what I'm doing right now. And that's what it turned out to be. So I changed my company name from Jason Reyes Coaching to Black Iron Fitness Company because it's not about me. It's about the people that I coach and the implements that I use. But that's not to say that I don't also train people using body weight. I train people using TRX straps. I mean, I've been in this industry for a very long time. I was NASM certified trainer, CrossFit did that whole thing, uh, functional movement screenings. If anybody out there knows what that is, like, you know, I, I went through that whole drinking that Kool-Aid process. Um, and in the last five years or so, even before that, I was using a lot of barbells, but really have honed in on solely focused on barbell based training specifically for beginners, 
and novices. And I'm going to have a conversation with you now a little bit about beginners and novices because that's really who I'm speaking to. But you know, if you're an intermediate, if you're a competitive power lifter, if you're a competitive crossfitter, if you're a competitive bodybuilder or a figure competitor, this goes for you too. But at the end of the day, I really want to see the barbell in the hands of more people who think it's inappropriate for them. Who are those people? That's your wife. That's your grandmother. That's your sister, right? These are the people who think, well, barbell equals scary, big and bulky power lifters. It means that I'm going to turn into a man. Oh, barbell means injury to the knees, injury to the back. I can't tell you how many people that I've met and that I've worked with and that I've seen that have found salvation from their pain using barbell training that's been applied appropriately. And we'll, we'll talk about what appropriate training looks like. Uh, you know, we'll talk about what the difference between training and exercising is. But when you use these implements, they can be used from everything from rehab all the way through to elite performances. And it could be elite performances in the sport of weightlifting. It could be elite performances in the sport of powerlifting. It could be elite performances even in the sport of bodybuilding and figure competitions. Heck, I use barbell training for my triathletes, my endurance athletes, my cyclists, because they need to do strength training. And I need something that's going to be a very reliable tool that they can find any place they go. Any place you travel in the world right now, you can find a CrossFit gym. And the CrossFit gym will likely have good quality racks, good quality barbells, plates, clips, possibly bumpers, and a space that allows you to use chalk. So there's never an excuse for you not to train. And if you wanted to train at home, you could get it set up really inexpensively. As a matter of fact, if you go to my Amazon page, I have an Amazon link. This is a disclaimer. I, I, I am an affiliate, so I do get something if you end up purchasing through me. So thank you. And if not, that's cool too. But I actually created a shopping list for a during the during the whole quarantine for a basic setup for somebody who wants to be able to barbell train at home it's a barbell it's bumper plates it's the the proper steel plates spring clips um and these little squat stands all of which and a very very light weight very movable bench all of which could be stored in the equivalent of a coat closet when you're not using it all you need is a four by eight space on your floor. You pull it out temporarily, you set up the squat stands, you put the little barbell on there, you, you pull out your plates, you put the bench down and you can press, you can squat, you can bench, you can do chins if you wanted to, you can do rows, you can do deadlifts and you can get it all done on the cheap. I think the whole setup is probably less than 600 bucks. I mean, if you think about your membership for a gym, let's say the average gym, 50 to 60 bucks. You multiply that by 12, you're already spending more for a gym membership than you would if you had purchased this inexpensive Amazon home gym, right? You can definitely go more elaborate. I mean, really nice setups are probably gonna cost you somewhere around 1500 to $2,000, but that's about the same amount of cost that you would spend if you went to Lifetime, for example, or maybe a 24 hour fitness or some of the other boutique clubs out there right? So people think that it's expensive and realistically it's not. If you are a member at one of these CrossFit gyms or you ever want to train, you've got your equipment wherever you are, right? Um, and, and so it's really accessible. It's really easy to get into. And one of the awesome things about the barbell is it's, it's incrementally loadable in even the smallest fractions. So for example, you can buy a 15 pound barbell, and you can buy a set of fractional plates. These pr plates come in fractions of a quarter pound, a half pound, three quarters of a pound, and one pound. So in terms of making consistent progression, you can add as little as a half a pound per workout from workout to workout, week to week. You can't necessarily easily do that with a plate loaded machine. If you've ever seen a plate loaded machine, like the leg press, for example, it's usually like 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, right? How do you make those micro changes in between? If you want to make pro progress, maybe you can't make that jump. If you're on the smaller side and you're looking to jump from one set of dumbbells to the other, for example, yes, they do have dumbbell fractionals. They're really in inconvenient and not available at most gyms. But let's say that right now you're doing 10 sets or 10 reps for three sets of overhead press with dumbbells that are 15 pounds, right? And you need to do heavier weight to progress. 
Well, if you jump to those 20 pounds, that's a 33% increase, right? So you've got yourself two 15 pound dumbbells that weigh 30 pounds in total. And for you to make the next jump on the dumbbell rack at your local gym, it's a five pound jump. It's a 33% increase. You're needing to go from 30 pounds to 40 pounds. That's a huge percentage. That's a huge jump. That's inappropriate programming. But if you've got a barbell that weighs 15 pounds that you've got loaded up to 30 pounds now with, you know, uh, seven and a half pounds of plates on each side and you get your little fractionals out, guess what? You can put a half pound on there. You can put one pound on there. You can put a pound and a half on there and you can make that jump, that percentage of jump that's appropriate for you. Maybe for me, an appropriate jump would be 5%. And if I was overhead pressing 200 pounds, right? That 5% is 10 pounds. But for you to make a ton pound jump, if you were only pressing overhead 30 pounds, to make a 10 pound add to that would be a huge percentage of, of what you were doing previously. It'd be inappropriate programming and you wouldn't come anywhere close to the rep range that you needed to possibly. You, your, your programming wouldn't stick together, right? So that's one of the beautiful things about the barbell is that it is incrementally loadable. And I'll tell you a little quick little anecdotal story. It's appropriate for everybody. My four-year-old daughter, I never pushed her to do so. She just watches me train people here in the house and I have groups come to the house and we all work out together and we do, we, we do, uh, you know, we had the Saturday morning class that we used to always have. It was a strength training and conditioning class where I would program six weeks at a time and people would come in and do two major lifts plus some conditioning and some, uh, you know, some, some, some fun other stuff. But she would watch people come and go all the time. And she decided that she wanted to participate one day. So here she is with my little 15 pound bar. And actually, I think she, I started off with just a dowel and she picked it up and she learned to squat properly with a dowel. And I didn't push her toward it at all. It wasn't like I was just letting her kind of play along. And she wanted to ask questions. She did. And at one point she asked me to teach her the lifts because she sees me teach people the lifts all the time. Eventually that turned into her using the 15 pound bar with the clips on it. Right. So maybe it was, I don't know, 17 pounds. And eventually it turned out to be her showing up to every class. And she knew what her weights needed to be. She knew what she did last time. She knew what she was supposed to do this time. And she participated just like everybody else. Now on the other end of that age spectrum, my oldest client that I've ever trained is 88 years young, never exercised with barbells in her whole life. She went to like the local gyms and whatnot. But at this point, her husband was, his health was taking a downturn. She was kind of staying around the house and she, her, I, I trained her daughter. And her, her, her other daughter was a very uh, prominent um, doctor in New York City. And after some conversations back and forth, you know, her, her daughter, who I trained, asked me, hey, could you train my mother? Absolutely, of course. Now, most people would hesitate at that. Now, I did what's appropriate. You know, I did a thorough intake. We did a lot of discussion beforehand. And I showed up at her ha house and I brought my little fractional plates. And I put two bumper plates in a backpack, strapped them in brought my 15 pound bars, walked it up. I think it was four or five flights of stairs in New York city. Uh, brought my little squat stands. I had them one in each hand. I, I just walked that right upstairs and I brought it in and I set it up and we didn't even use that on the first day. I just had her practice getting it up and down from a chair. I grabbed the broom handle off of her, her broom and screwed it off. And I, I had her press that over her head. I had her lay down on the coffee table that was there on her back. And I had to practice just moving the bar, the, 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 um, the wooden dowel up and down like a bench press, right? I taught her to pick up the, I think I, I think I had my backpack with me or it was either her back, my backpack or no, no, I know it was her purse, right? She, so she had a relatively heavy bag. And so I had her pick up the bag off the ground, but taught her to do it with what very closely approximated a conventional deadlift form. And then eventually I had her do that same movement pattern with the dowel. And then I hung the dowel off uh, the, the bag off of one side and my backpack off of the other side, which wasn't very, very loaded down at the time. And then I pulled out those two bumper plates and the, and the barbell and I, and I handed her the two bags and I said, okay, you picked this up, right? You picked up these two bags and she's like, yeah. Okay. I said, do you feel comfortable with that? Yeah, that's fine. Right. Cause at first when she saw me walk in with all this equipment, she, she was very scared. Um, so I, I said, do you have a ba bathroom scale? 
And she did. So we pulled out the bathroom scale and I took the two bags and I put them on the bathroom scale and we got the total weight on it. Right? And I think the total weight ended up being about 40 pounds, something like that. But she had picked that up like numerous times and with good form and with them hanging off the end of that dowel. I said, did that, did that scare you at all? And so then I pulled out the barbell and I think the plates that I was using at the time were five pound bumper plates. So they were like the real, real small bumper plates. So it was a 15 pound barbell and five pound bumper plate. So we're talking about a total of 25 pounds. And I, and I, I had her read them. I had her hold them. I said, now you were scared of this when I first walked in, right? And she's like, yeah. And so I did the math for her. We did it together and she realized it's 15 pounds less than what she was just picking up with those two bags, her purse and my backpack. So I set it on the floor. I said, now do the exact same thing you did. And she did it with perfect form, five beautiful reps, right? Um, I wouldn't say perfect form, but really good form, um, as good as she had done before. And so we, we took out that implement. I said, okay, now would you consider standing up out of your chair with that dowel on your shoulders? And sure enough, she felt comfortable with that. So I put that dowel on her shoulders. I put her hands in the place that approximated where it should be. I had her lean forward and I had her pull her heels back a little bit. So she was essentially doing the equivalent of like a box squat. And I just had her stand up and sit down a few times. And once she was comfortable with that, I said, okay, great. Now, what would you think about trying that with that empty bar with no weights on it? Just 15 pounds. She's like, I think I could do that. I said, and, and what we'll do is we'll practice taking it out of this, this squat stand, these squat stands that I brought up here, um, just because it's going to be more convenient for you. And she felt comfortable with that. And she did that. Then I went back a number of times and I think she actually, after, because I couldn't travel down to the city every single time. I live about 45 minutes outside of Manhattan. So it was really unfeasible. This was supposed to be a short term thing, but I traveled down there a few times and I took her through a few sessions and I got her comfortable with it. And then I point her in the direction of a gym that I thought she'd be able to find a very competent, um, actually a, a starting strength coach. And I don't know if she ended up going to that gym because I had recommended a couple places. There's a couple of people that are starting th strength coaches that actually work down the gym. But as far as I know, she is still barbell training at this, at this day. And as a matter of fact, you can see, if you go to my Instagram and you scroll down a bit, you'll see, um, me working out with her at 88 years young and you I, I actually took i asked her if it was okay if i could take some po photos because I, I try to explain to her like this is a big deal for your contemporaries i think it would be very good for the public to see somebody like you who's gotten to this point feeling comfortable with this doing something that would be so unexpected and so she agreed and i set up my little camera in the corner and we'd go through our session and pretend it's not even there and then we ended up getting some cool videos and some cool photos out of it but you can you can see that um, so that's my point is like this barbell has applications across the, across the range. And we'll go into, like I said, in a future episode, I'm going to break it down for if you're interested in, in weight loss and aesthetics, you want to fit better in your clothes. You want to look better naked. That's your only interest. Why might you consider the barbell? If you want to be stronger, but not be bigger, you don't want to get big and bulky, but you want to be able to play with your kids, you know, uh, your grandkids and, and you want to live a healthier life and be able to get off the toilet when you're 80 years old here you go right you, you want to work on your blood pressure and and get more steps in and make sure you're meeting the the minimum guidelines for health and activity and fitness here you go right so we'll we'll break down how this applies this black iron style of training applies to all these different modalities but the the thing is it is it's not necessarily the best tool for all of them it's not the best tool for everybody it's not everybody's preferred method but it's very useful and it can be very well applied to so many different things. It's very easily accessible. You can walk into just about any gym and find a barbell and find plates. Now, unfortunately in most globo gyms, you'll find really crappy barbells and you'll find all the weights are completely disorganized. And most times they have like these flat sides on them, which is not recommended for certain lifts for certain reasons. We'll go into that in the future, but you can find it there. You can find it at your local CrossFit box. If you're traveling someplace, you call the local CrossFit box in advance these gyms are called boxes for those that are uninitiated in CrossFit. You call the gym and they often have open gym hours or they have what are called drop-ins. So if you're on a program and you're doing a barbell based program and you need to train while you're on vacation, you don't have to use that crappy hotel gym. Now you can, a lot of people that I train with barbells that have setups in their home when they go on vacation, I'm like, don't worry about finding a CrossFit gym. Let's go find the local. If you want to work out, cool. You don't have to work out when you're on vacation, you're on vacation, but if you feel like you want to, cause you, you don't, you know, whatever you're paying penance for all the fun you're having, or you want to maintain your fitness as you're on, you know, on this journey. Cool. We can do it in the, the hotel gym. Just 
you know, walk down to the hotel gym, pull out your video camera, to do a, a, a slow 360 in the middle of the of the uh, the gym, and send me the video a couple days in advance so I can see what equipment's there, and we'll figure out what's going to be a good workout for us to do when we log on together on Zoom. But if you aren't one of those people and you want to actually train with your barbell, all you have to do is find your local CrossFit gym. A lot of times, 20 bucks. They'll let you in for the day, and you'll have access to high-quality equipment. Yeah, it's 20 bucks. So what? You're going to spend more than that on drinks. You're going to spend more than that on food. You're going to spend more on... You're going to piss that money away anyway. But it's accessible just about any place you go. And even if you don't own a gym, you don't go to a gym, rather, or you, you don't go belong to a CrossFit box, you can set yourself up at home for anywhere between five to 600 bucks for a very simple setup to get you started, which... Uh, here's the great thing about that. When you decide you want to upgrade, if you decide that you get really into this, you can sell that for just about every penny that you got it for and then upgrade to a thousand, fifteen hundred dollar setup where you get a nice set of squat stands from Rogue or from Titan or something like that. Get yourself a quality barbell, right? Never go cheap on your barbell. You can get used steel, used iron on eBay, on OfferUp, on Facebook mar Marketplace. Um, a lot of times at scrapyards, they'll actually have it as people liquidated gyms. A lot of gyms close, so there's a lot of stuff out there. But you get yourself set up for fifteen hundred, maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars, and have a really nice home gym. You know the beauty of that? Saves you a shit ton of time. Because just think about this: every time you need to go to the gym, your drive to the gym. Let's say your fifteen minutes drive. Well, it takes you time to get out of your house, get into your car, get all your shit packed up, drive to the gym, get into the gym, check in, go to the, the, the locker room, get to the squat rack, hoping nobody is at, that, that is there to, to have to uh, compete with for the one to two squat racks that they have in most commercial gyms. That and alone is going to take you 45 minutes. Now you've done your workout, took you a half an hour to an hour, whatever it is. Now you got to go back to the locker room, get all your shit. Get back to the car, drive home, get home, get undressed, do your whole thing. If it's in your basement, if it's in your garage, if it's in your closet and able to be pulled out into your drive uh, into your living room, you go to bed with your workout clothes on. You wake up the next day before you even do anything. You go pull that stuff out. You spend a hot 20 to 30 minutes doing a couple basic exercises. You stuff it back in the closet and you're done. And you save yourself probably somewhere north of an hour. You do that four or five days a week. Let's say it's three days a week, three hours a week, 52 weeks in a year. We're talking over 150 hours that you saved yourself. How much did you save yourself in gym dues? How much time? Because time is money, right? How many excuses that you possibly could have had, right? So it's right there. If you have yourself a nice home gym setup, which I encourage people to do. If you're going to make yourself a gym, try to make it appealing. Try to make it so that you want to go in there. Make it a place where yeah, there's a nice little plant that you like. You got some good music. The lighting's good. The temperature's good, right? Maybe you put a motivational poster up on the wall, but make it so that you want to go there. Then maybe you'll find your family members and friends when they come over. They want to go down there because it's a cool space to hang out, right? My gym, if you see my gym in my garage, I convert my, my cars. I have a pretty nice car. It lives outside. I've, I've got a truck that I drive every single day and then I've got my, my nice car. And it lives outside. My gym has been converted to a studio with two platforms, two racks, every piece of equipment that you could possibly imagine. I've got a cardio room behind me. I've got a mat room on the other side where I, I can uh, practice jujitsu. And I've converted my downstairs into my business. This is what I do. But I also would have done this for myself anyway. And I love it because I can come down here and I've got a full gym in my basement. Now I've acquired this stuff over years. But I've gotten it on the cheap. I have over 2,000 pounds worth of steel in my garage right now. Really high quality, vintage, York calibrated plates. And I got them for 50 cents a pound before a couple weeks before this whole COVID thing happened. Th those things will never be replaced. They're beautiful. They have that nice patina on them. I've got nice barbells, right? I've invested in this because this is my business. I've ha actually had a couple people gift me some barbells as thank yous and as holiday gifts, right? And also because they were barbells that they were going to be needing for their training. So they figured they'd help stock the gym. But I wake up at four o'clock, 4.30 in the morning. I have my cup of coffee. I go online and I log on to True Coach where I've got my, my clients that have submitted their workouts from the day before. I give them their quick video feedback and the people that didn't have workouts the day before, I just do a quick hello, just to touch base with them before they get a chance to wake up and get fitness on their mind sit there and sip my cup of coffee. I've already got my sweats and my t-shirt and my hoodie on. And I go into my cold basement, which doesn't stay cold for long because once you get moving, you're warm. And I have a beautiful workout 
takes me about 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. And then I come back in, take a shower, have some breakfast, sit down at my desk and log on for my first client. So I can't stress enough the fact that black iron training is accessible to everybody. It's appropriate for very, very many people, more people than would think about it. And that's why you're here because you like the barbell. I like the barbell. We love the barbell. We're brought together because of the barbell. We're brothers and sisters in iron, essentially. And so in these coming segments, I'm going to be talking about programming. I'm going to be talking about, like I said, the difference between training and exercise, lifestyle. I'm going to get into equipment, selection ideas. I'm going to start talking to some of the who's who of the barbell based community for strength and fitness in, in the social media space. I'm going to try and interview as many people. If you have questions, I want to address those questions here, right? This is our space. This is where we come to talk. We're going to talk iron and hopefully you really enjoy this journey. I really want to hear your feedback. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, hit the little bell notification and make sure that you turn on all notifications so that you get word when I post another video. If you're listening to this on iTunes, go ahead and give me a five star review, please. Or, and, and give me some comments, right? Um, I'll try to drop some links in the description box for this podcast to where that Amazon, uh, the, the Amazon wish list for, or the, um, I guess it's a shopping list for that cheap setup. Um, and I'll see if there's any other pertinent links that have things that I mentioned in this podcast. I'll see if I can drop them down there. You can also find all of my information, social media stuff like my Instagram, my Facebook, my website, um, my Amazon affiliate codes, uh, Oh, um, discount code for the nutrition app that I coach people using, uh, RP nutrition, shout out to them, but I really appreciate the support. I'm trying to get this off the ground. This is something that I've had in the works and wanted to do for a long time. So now I'm just winging it. I'm just going to go through this and I'm going to try to take you on a step-by-step -step journey from the beginning to the advanced or actually probably to the intermediate stages. You know, I want to go through this in a systematic manner. So as you listen to subsequent episodes, I'm going to start walking you through the process of getting started. This was just kind of a little primer about what black iron training is, who it's for, why you might consider it, why you might already be doing it, who you might want to suggest it to and things that you might want to think about. But as we go into future episodes, I'm going to be walking down the road of getting set up from not knowing anything about black iron barbell based training to getting yourself to wherever you want to be as an intermediate, as an advanced beginner, uh, whether it be get, losing that weight, getting that strength, um, working way back from injury, whatever it may be. And yes, it is appropriate for inner injury. Um, like I said before, we're really brothers and sisters in the iron, aren't we? So until next time, keep training.